Hello again, everyone. My name is Marty Guthmiller, CEO at Orange City Area Health System, bringing you today on December 28th, the 83rd and final edition uh, for 2020 of our COVID-19 community briefings. Um, uh, as of this is the, the first of the week, we normally would start off with a local scoreboard. Really don't have much to offer uh, for that today. Uh, other than things are much quieter here at the hospital um, than they have been. We have currently no COVID patients in the hospital, which of course is a, is a very good thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and jump right into Sioux County stats. Um, and, and everything is referenced to a week ago, uh, which was our, our last briefing. And so um, our last briefing was December 21st. So here we go, uh, Sioux County. 14-day average in Sioux County is 15.5%. That is down, uh, as I'm gonna say throughout this presentation, the numbers are down and that's a, a, a very good thing. So 14-day average in Sioux County, 15.5, previously 18.1, before that 17.3, and before that 19.1, so clearly down. The seven-day average in Sioux County is 10.8%. Again, down from 13.2, 13.7, and 15.5. Uh, so very good news on those two numbers there. Our positivity rate per 100,000 population, again, which is a new metric that we're following, uh, over the last seven days is 223.4. Previously, when we talked about that, it was 320.8, so significantly less there. The 223.4 represents an 88.7% decrease uh, over the previous seven day period of time. Sioux County did have 74 positives, uh, additional positives uh, in the past week. Um, and that is uh, 4,278 total positives now. Region three, 93 hospitalized in, in region three. So we're in double digits, uh, which is uh, uh, good compared to the triple digits. Uh, 93 compares to previously 106, uh, 128, and 138. So good numbers and a steady decline there, uh, which is good. There are nine people in the ICU in region three. That number is down from 15. Uh, we still have four people on ventilators in region three. Again, the 20 counties in Northwest Iowa that is down from eight last week, uh, Monday. Iowa, uh, as a state, the individual positivity over the last 14 days is 12.1%. Uh, that is down from 13.2, 13.7, and 15.1. So again, very good trend line there in the state of Iowa. The state of Iowa over the last seven days 9.4% positivity rate, down from 10.4, down from 10.5, and 11.1. The individual positivity per 100,000 population over the last seven days in the state of Iowa is 215.8, and that is down 1.04% compared to the previous seven days. Very good trend lines uh, developing across the state and certainly in Region 3 and in Sioux County. The number of Iowans hospitalized somewhere uh, is, is up a little bit, uh, 651, which is up slightly from 644 a week ago. But that number is down from 776 and 863 previously. So down, down substantially, uh, 651. Uh, Iowans hospitalized with COVID somewhere. Sioux County is three, and that remains constant. Uh, we, we reported three last week, Monday as well. This thing isn't over yet. Uh, while the numbers are good, uh, it's not over. Um, and, and we usually end the statistical part of this uh, presentation with the number of deaths. And again, uh, as a reminder that it is not over. We did have 156 additional people die this week uh, in Iowa, um, 156 additional. 
the number is 3,745 COVID-related deaths in the state of Iowa. Sioux County remains the same at 41, and there is no change in the demographic. So uh, we're not through it, it's not over. Things are, are going much, much better, uh, but we would expect that death rate to start to decline as well, um, uh, but, but it will take a while. I'm gonna shift uh, into a little bit more of a vaccination report at, at this time. Um, we do have some very uh, new and specific information on our most vulnerable population and it's our nursing home residents. Um, and, and as you probably all are aware by now, uh, Walgre Walgreens will be taking care of 100% of our nursing home residents and our nursing home staff. Including in that uh, is the assisted living division at Landsmere Ridge Retirement Community as well. We have received word uh, that the first dose, round one, so to speak, will be administered by Walgreens on January 5th. We will do all of our nursing home residents and staff, as well as Landsmere Ridge on January 5. The second dose is scheduled as well for January 26. Um, that, will also, that will be a dose two, the, the final dose, uh, with the Pfizer vaccine, but it will also be dose one for people that weren't available on January 5th or changed their mind uh, since January 5th. Um, and so they re can receive dose one on that day as well, January 26th. For those folks, February 16th will be dose number two, um, and, and that will be provided again by Walgreens. And then thereafter, uh, our senior care population, nursing home residents uh, and staff will all be taken care of through the Moderna vaccine, uh, which is being administered through the health system. So the Walgreens is a kind of a one and done, uh, but will be next over the next basically six weeks. Just as an FYI, we have about a little over 95% of our nursing home residents have opted in to getting vaccine, and so that's a good, good thing as well. <clears throat> um, one of the things to remember though in our nursing home population is uh, we have not received any direction or directives relative to loosening things up a little bit. Um, certainly with the, with the second dose being January 26th at the earliest, allowing a couple weeks to make sure that that takes effect. You know, we're talking mid-February probably before things could open a little bit, uh, more realistically, March 1, April 1 kind of thing. Um, we just don't know yet what we will be allowed to do um, in, in terms of opening things up for family visits, um, you know, those kinds of things, outings. Uh, we just don't know. We're on the path. Uh, to something. We just don't know how long it's going to take to go down that path. Um, as we get the vaccines and as more directives come out, we'll, we'll be sure to communicate that. Um, but, but just because we're, we're done with the second dose on January 26th doesn't mean that things are going to open up uh, completely yet. We hope to, um, but it's going to be a little bit of a process yet to go. In terms of the health system, and we are still pursuing the phase 1A uh, mandate that's required by the state in terms of uh, healthcare personnel. Um, and that, that is paid or unpaid, direct or indirect exposure. And so we're going through those. Last week was a goofy week. Uh, the vaccine arrived, we got things organized, we had the snowstorm. Um, and so we had about two days of being able to administer vaccine. Uh, we, we administered 78 doses last week. Uh, we expect a lot more this week. Um, the vaccine is here. We, we got 100 additional doses for this week. Um, and we will be going very methodically uh, through the phase 1A uh, eligibility and, and vaccinating as many people as we can. We do expect uh, several hundred to be vaccinated um, if not this week yet, um, certainly by the week after. Um, again, we're not mandating this vaccine for anybody, but we are strongly 
encouraging um, folks when eligible, when their number is called, as I said, to accept that call and to, to take the vaccine. We think it's uh, very important to be able to do that. What the next phase is, we don't know. We haven't received what's phase 1B, 1C exactly yet in terms of when we can open this up to a broader population in our community. Uh, we're, it's not that we don't want to, we very much do. It's that we are not allowed to at this, po at this point. So um, as, as has been our plan, we will communicate that as soon as we find out. And so please don't call our uh, clinic asking about your availability to the vaccine because un unless you're a healthcare personnel uh, or somebody working in our facility, um, you're, you're not on the list yet. Um, we're working through all of that. And, and again, in, in its accordance with uh, the state mandates and what we're required to do. Um, I think at this point, we are going to go to weekly briefings, um, not as an indication that the thing's over because this, this isn't. Uh, but we will plan on most likely early in the week. So this will be the last briefing of this week. Uh, but we'll look at again um, in 2021, uh, getting our first briefing either on Monday or Tuesday of that week. Again, this is not over. We want everybody to stay vigilant. We want to um, continue to practice those reasonable steps that uh, have, have been preached for a long, long time now. So continue to wash your hands, continue to practice good hygiene, continue to wear your masks when, when separation and when out in public. Um, <clears throat> there is a light at the end of the tunnel, <clears throat> but we're still in a tunnel. <clears throat> Excuse me. So continue with your flu shots, uh, continue to keep that engine tuned, um, stay vigilant, stay strong, and we wish you all a very, very healthy 2021. Thank you for joining us. It's been an honor and privilege to uh, care for many of you. Uh, it's been an honor and privilege to communicate with many of you. And uh, let, let, let's not repeat this in 2020, okay? So happy and healthy 2021 to all. Uh, we'll see you next year. Thank you.